All right, we, uh, I think we're good to go, you guys. Okay, so thank you so much for coming today. We're talking about foodie fun at home, the holiday style. So kids, snacks, and gifts to make is what we're talking about today. So really appreciate you guys coming. And my name is Andrea Nikolai and I work for the University of Florida Extension in Polk County. And so my job, I'm a registered dietitian and I love talking about food and nutrition. So um, that's what I do and I try to help um, prevent diabetes and um, things like help everyone, I guess, be healthier in our county especially. And thank you guys all for joining today, um, no matter where you're at. So if you haven't used Zoom very much, you can kind of, um, you can use the chat box as the best way to ask questions and things like that. And you can, if it's not showing up, hover your mouse on the top or the bottom of the screen and it should kind of pop up. And then if you don't see it, you can press those dots there for more and it should be under there. So um, also I have a short evaluation I'll send you guys following this webinar. I really appreciate your feedback because it helps me know, you know, how I can do this better and things like that. So for the future, in case I get to have you guys again. So the three big things you need to know from this presentation today. So we're talking snacking, one, two, three, and then we'll talk about healthy and fun holiday snacks. These are the fun parts. And then yummy gifts to make beyond the sweets. And I have to tell you guys too, just to back up, I really wanna thank the people who donated um, some money for the um, for my programming. I'm yeah, I will use it wisely and I just wanted to um, give a shout out to those people and tell them thank you. And also I promised you guys who donated an infographic on healthy holiday swaps. And so I worked with um, UF IFAS communications and I think it turned out pretty awesome. So next week I'll have to send that to you guys um, who donated. So thank you very much. Okay, so I just wanted to say that. So those are the three things. And then, okay, so just keep it in mind the my plate, right? So the idea is to fill half of your plate with fruits and vegetables, um, whatever you're eating. So trying to look at what you're having like at lunches and dinners, you know, is half of it made up of fruits and vegetables. So that's about where you need to be at. So I would just, you know, you're like, why are you talking about this? We're talking about snacks. And so the thing is, a lot of times in America, um, the vegetables and the fruits are what we're missing out on. I know that's surprising to a lot of people, um, but we are really falling short. So if you can get those at your snacks, and I'll try to help you guys figure out some fun ones to use those, but just if you have grandkids, kids, or yourself, or your husband, or your wife, um, these would be great things to try to include in snacks so you can get double like the nutrition if, even if you don't get it all during your meals. Okay, so that's a lot about that. But just wanted to go over to the what and when of snacking. So there's a, um, somebody told me once she would hold up two hands and she's like, this is a meal and then a snack is one hand. So the idea is not to have another meal as a snack, okay? And so then trying to pick things with like two food groups can have lasting holding power. If you're really hungry, you know, having something like nuts and carrots, you know, together instead of just uh, maybe carrots can help um, hold you over longer. And then thinking outside the box too. So, you know, sometimes we're like, okay, what's in the pantry? Like any you know, of those packaged things. And that's what we go for, for snacks, but check your produce drawer. Um, Things like that are great snacks and not always in the pantry. So um, just another thing too, just what to choose, right? Um, yeah, so go easy on like sugary snacks, you know, they add empty calories, right? So they give you a short burst of energy and then let you down. And that's same with the kids. So we have a lot of those big plentiful supply this time of holiday years, you know, the holiday season. So really try to make those kind of the special occasion and try to do other things the rest of the time. So just some ideas and tips, like whether you're a grown up or adult, you know, keep the healthy stuff handy because if it's healthy, you're way more likely to eat it if it's handy, okay? Um, so keep the bowl on the counter, you know, bagged apple slices right there ready to go for you um, just can really help and letting 
if you're working with kids or maybe even your spouse, you know, letting them choose out of two healthy options. So it feels like they're in control, um, but you're kind of limiting what they're getting, you know, and that works even if you're at the store and you're kind of like, you know, which would you rather have for snack? Um, you know, would you rather have pear slices or apple slices instead of saying, you know, well, what do you want me to get you for snacks? <laughs> okay, so, and then making it fun, which we'll talk about now. So healthy and fun holiday snacks, yay. So just um, here are some ideas and obviously you guys, there are so many out there just with things people have done with fun holiday snacks, but I tried to put some together that maybe would be easy for you to do, right? Um, and that um, you and your kids will really like. And so getting out the cookie cutters. Now these are easy things, right? So all you have to do is get the cookie cutter and take something that you're normally using anyway, like cheese slices, sandwiches, melon slices, quesadillas. Um, and then you can make um, chips, right? Out of tortillas by, you know, cutting them out with the cookie cutters and then baking them. You can season them or let your kids season them um, different ways to make them feel like, you know, they have a play in it. They're more likely to eat it. And then um, cutting bread, just, you know, if you don't have a cookie cutter, just taking a knife and then cutting it like a tree. Um, you can spread it with some hummus or some low fat cream cheese. And then you kind of, you know, cut um, cucumber slices or, you know, kiwi slices, if um, maybe not the hummus or the cream cheese, but then um, in half, right? The slices in half. And it kind of looks like, um, you know, like a tree, you know, when you're putting it on there. So it can work really well. And then speaking of shapes, right? So, like when you're making pancakes, just trying to make them like in the candy cane shape or something like that can be fun. And then adding fruit, you could add it right on top of that. You know, with the candy cane, you could do the strawberry and then the banana alternating on top of the pancake. <laughs> that would be delicious. So that's the next idea too, is just taking, you know, something like banana and watermelon or red grapes and, you know, green grapes or making a candy cane that way. And then, um, you guys know the song, right? In a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, so the pear kind of looks like a tree. So I'm sure that's where the song is all coming from. But then you can decorate this, right? So just having some fun. I was just thinking of ideas that would be really fun to do. So you get like little toothpicks, maybe you have to break them in half, but then you could stick them in the pear and you could decorate it. It would be kind of fun um, and fun to do with your kids. So just an idea on that. And so the idea would be that they eat it then too, right? And so here are some other ideas. Um, the top one is just really fun. And I've done that with kids a number of times. You just take a grape, right? And then you add a slice of banana and then a strawberry and you put a marshmallow on top and it all fits on a toothpick. And so just kind of a fun way to get that. And then I don't know if you guys have seen um, there's a strawberry Santa where they cut off. So you take the straw, like a strawberry, flip it upside down, just like the hat on that Santa hat there. Um, and then you cut it like um, part of the tip off and you stuff like yogurt in between there. And then you put the top back on and you can put eyes on the yogurt part and it kind of looks like a little Santa, um, kind of a chubby Santa. So um, it's kind of, it's a fun snack. And then some other ideas holiday kebabs right just using the green and red fruit um, but kebabs are fun any time of the year and then um, snowman on a stick if you've ever seen that one it's kind of like um, I need to do some of these things that take a um, picture I had a report last week and so I ran out of time but just putting a green grape on top and then you follow by like a red strawberry hat and then you have the three banana slices as the body so you're putting that all on a skewer, uh, something like that. So it can be really good. Now talking about snowmen, right? Um, filling salary and then making a snowman outfit. So that could be a reach, but it's still, you know, just it's just what you name it, right? Uh, fun any time of the year. And then you draw a snowman on a mozzarella cheese stick on the packaging, right? Keep that in mind and you can do something like that. And then holiday apple nachos, just something else that's fun. It's always delicious. You just cut slices of apples or pears. And so I have um, red and green theme here, but 
I actually made this as a um, dish for coworkers one time and it was a hit. So that's just another idea to get some healthy stuff in it that tastes good. You can drizzle it with peanut butter or Greek yogurt and then you throw on like nuts and seeds and things like that. Then there's apple nachos version two where you can just slice apples, you put on a peanut butter or that yogurt mix. And I've actually, there's a really good dip where you mixed uh, vanilla, low fat yogurt with um, some peanut butter. And it's um, FNIP, if any of you guys are listening from um, Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program, it's one of their recipes, but it's really good. And a lot of people um, seem to like it. So that's an option. And then you top it with fun toppings and kids love doing this and they're really good tasting. So. Um, Apple nachos, part two. And then if your kids are a little bit more adventurous or for your adult gatherings, cauliflower nachos, ah, delicious. So you just take the cauliflower, you roast it, and then you can spread on um, things like refried beans, shredded Mexican cheese. These have jalapenos, grape tomatoes, red onions, cilantro, avocado. So lots of fun things there. And then creating a ornament with just anything. So think about like um, a base, right? You need a base for your ornament. And then you would add um, some sort of coating on there. So everything sticks like the mashed avocado, tomato sauce, uh, peanut butter, yogurt, and then putting on the decorations then. And it can be delicious and a way to get a lot of color in your day, which is important. You know, a lot of times, you know, maybe you just have a jelly sandwich or butter sandwich. So then this would be a way to get some more um, things and you can just cut it in a circle if you want to make it an ornament or something like that. So it's a good idea, I guess. And then um, just thinking about some other really fun, healthy, uh, snack ideas would just be freezing grapes. They're delicious. Um, kids can love them coming right out of the freezer. Frozen fruit cups, an example of that recipe for that. So you put these in muffin tins, right? So you mix it like banana, frozen strawberries, yogurt, crushed pineapple, and then you freeze it in the muffin tins and they're good snacks. Um, kind of tastes like a dessert also. Skinny strawberry sorbet. You might have heard of the banana ice cream. So this works really well too. It's just, you take the frozen strawberries instead of frozen bananas, and then you add a few fresh so that it will blend uh, well together, or you can just thaw a few um, and then becomes a strawberry ice cream kind of like. So, okay. And just so you know, I was looking it up just to see, but don't ask why I looked this up, but burr is actually a word. So it's three hours if anybody needs to know that for the, upcoming winter season. So then um, we also have green or red fruit smoothies. So right along those eyes lines, then it's about one to one. I looked at a lot of recipes just to try to confirm this, but it's about fruit, about one cup of whatever fruit you want, and then to about one cup of that yogurt or milk mix, or whichever one you would like to choose. The fruit, if it's frozen, you don't really need the ice, but you can add some. And just another idea from the FNEP program, the great smoothie, it's uh, three cups of strawberries, a banana to make it creamy. So bananas add the creaminess, milk and yogurt. And then you throw in a handful of spinach and nobody knows it's there. So it's really good, good idea. And then fruit and yogurt parfaits, you can just use those green or red fruits to make it holiday style, but just making something that's really basic, you know, fruit and yogurt, making it more fun by putting it in a clear glass. And then you can top it with something even like Cheerios. So it doesn't have to be granola. Sometimes Cheerios might have, you know, a lot less sugar and fat than the granola does. So great idea it could be something like just cereal. And avocado toast, right? It's green. You spread it on toast and you can put on a lot of different things like egg. And I bet you guys probably have a lot of ideas on the avocado toast. And I can't help it. Uh, this is just fun and it looks pretty. I made it for a holiday gathering once and it's really easy. And it's not the healthiest recipe, but it's not so bad either. And so all you do is you take um, jello and then you take marshmallows and you kind of melt them together. And the marshmallows, you know, whatever, however this works, they go to the top and then you can just roll it up. And so it can be a pretty fun 
um, snack, just encouraging the other stuff too, right? And then lastly on the snacks, uh, just thinking of other great, you know, green and red snacks to have. Um, here are some, so keeping those in mind. Okay, so now we get to talk about edible gifts that um, would be a hit and then nutritious also. So that's what we're going with here. So popcorn, munchies, just, um, you just take popcorn, right? And then you add like kind of making it like a trail mix, adding different things to that. I've also given it out to coworkers, just you season it different ways. Um, like one I did like a pizza seasoning and then a Southwest seasoning or curry seasoning. And then you just put it in little bags. And so it's kind of a you know fun, a healthy snack, but people seem to really like it. So that can work. And then getting your kids involved with that too, because if they can help flavor it, just makes it more fun. So it's not something hard. You just give them, you know, let them pick their seasoning and go at it. Then, so we have a dry ingredient mixes. So you might've seen a lot of these like the soup mix or um, chili mixes, but there's a lot of other ones too that you could do that would be healthy and nutritious. And these are great gifts and easy. So what you would do is something you could just do oatmeal, right? So we like overnight oats are a big thing and things like that, but you could just make your own oatmeal packets, kind of spice it up a little bit, make it a little fancier. You could just do raisins and cinnamon in with the oatmeal and put it in little baggies and tie it with ribbon, or you can put it in jars, but you could also do some of the other ideas listed there, just like things like cuts, apricots or apples, you know, it's hard to find a oatmeal packet, you know, with those things in there. So it can be interesting and trail mix. Everybody seems to love trail mix. So just putting in some different stuff. And then I have some of this at my house ready to go. Actually, it's an energy ball mix. So you take like um, quick oats, you add non-fat dry milk, and then you add some raisins. And then you can attach this onto the gift. Then you just need some peanut butter and honey. And it works. You just add those in there and mix them all. And then you have the energy balls. All right. So there's some other, a couple other mixes and just thinking, you know, you're like, well, I don't really like chai tea, you know, or something like that, but you can use chai tea mix and yogurt, oatmeal, banana smoothies. It's really good. And you could also do the whole clove version and then the cinnamon stick. And then you could uh, add black tea bags with your gift and that would work and would be really fun. And I've also seen them putting these mixes um, and also herb mixes, which I have one coming up here, but just, you know, putting them in a clear ornament, you know, that's been washed, but you know how they sell those where you can get, you can fill them. So then doing that and putting the spice mix in there can make it, make it even, I guess, just enhance it that much more. So here's a homemade ranch dressing mix. It's really good recipe. So wanted to throw that out there. The idea is it like you have to memorize all these things, you know, but just to kind of get you thinking about what you would like to do, that could be a good option. And then, um, so think nuts are great snacks. They're really good for you. Lots of protein, they have fiber um, and healthy fats. So keeping those things in mind. So doing like spice nuts or seeds, again, kids can really help out with that. You know, you just do different rows on the baking sheet and then, you know, this is the chili roll, <laughs> this is the cinnamon roll. And then things like granola bars, you can find some good recipes um, for some lower sugar, healthier ones online, which is great. Granola and then nut butters. Um, nut butter is a great gift. So you just take some nuts and you blend it up and you can put lots of different things in it. Um, just, I, roast, I mentioned some that just, I've seen and thought of, and I have some actually in, at my house like that, but just can be really fun gifts and healthier options. So roasted chickpeas, that's also you know a really good one. You just take a can of chickpeas and then you season it just like you would nuts, but they sell those at the store and it's just, you know, then you can make your own and with your own seasonings and it would be a fun gift to do. Other good ideas? just making your own salad dressing. And so the thing with these, a couple of those, like the mustard and the salad dressing, the idea is that the person you give it to would wanna refrigerate it. 
So then I guess keeping that in mind, you know, maybe it's not the most, um, it's a great gift for some people and not um, for people you won't, um, that won't have an access to a refrigerator right away. And then also seasoning mixes. So creating your own of that, maybe putting it in the ornament, just like we talked about. And then breads uh, can be really good. So another thing that's perishable, just keeping that in mind, but like those things on the bottom, that's a picture of, um, it's uh, Mike's life-changing bread. And so they're, those whole grain CD breads are really trendy right now. So that could be a good option, but other holiday flavors are great. And people always seem to love homemade bread. So it could be a good thing. Fruit leather, you know, fun gift. I guess all you do is you take fresh, frozen or drained canned fruit or drained can, canned fruit. So you can use any one and then you puree it, right? And then it's gonna bake um, or you could dehydrate it. It's gonna take a while, <laughs> but um, you can then use cookie cutters or you can just roll it up. And I actually did, this is a recipe from North Carolina sweet potatoes, but I did, uh, I was a tester for a sweet potato recipe contest. And I ended up testing this sweet potato weather here and it, it, was, uh, it was one of the winners. So it was pretty good. You, they just, you just puree sweet potatoes with, I think it's an apple and a pear. And then, um, yeah, so then you bake that down and make that into recipe. So lots of different things you could do with the fruit leather. And here's just another recipe idea, just using some more basic fruit ones. And you know, you could use watermelon, but it's gonna take a really long time to dry out. So that's why you often see it used, um, the fruit leathers with these things. Okay, so dried fruit can be another good thing, as you can see like on the bottom picture or on the top picture, but the oven temperature is really low to dry it. And it works, you know, it works awesome in a dehydrator. Uh, I have a master food and nutrition volunteer who has that dehydrator and she has a banana tree, banana herb, I guess, in her yard. And so she gets a ton of bananas at one time, but loves those banana dehydrated like that. And so the thing with those is usually when you get dried bananas, they have extra oil added, but these, you know, don't and they're delicious. So, and then pineapple is the bottom one and then flavored vinegars. So there's a lot of uh, great, like, okay. So the National Center for Home Food Preservation is a great resource for this and for the dried fruit. Just, they have recipes and they just tell you how to do it. So you're sure you're safe and you're good to go, but it's really, you know, flavored vinegars are a simpler option. They recommend not to do the oils with the herbs. There's a bigger chance of botulism. So really, if you can stick with the flavored vinegars, or if you do the flavored oils, just make sure they're refrigerated and used within a couple of days. So here's kind of just the basics of what you would need with the flavored vinegars, but you can take it just as you would like, and then you leave it sit, and then you strain it. Um, be a really good gift. Okay, so just, I think this is my last slide, but it's just um, some other home preservation gifts. So using apples, right? Um, there's some great apple butter, always a hit. And you can just do this pear butter. There's a recipe there from Chop Chop Family. And it, all it is is pears and water, right? And you just make a pear butter needs to be refrigerated unless you can it correctly. And so then I'm giving you that National Center for Home Food Preservation. So if you just put in like food preservation or something like that in your internet, it hopefully will come up for you, but just giving you a good reputable source so you know you can do it um, well. The recipes, you know, very tested and safe. So, okay. So that's a lot, but just I, I'm going to try to send that evaluation to you guys following this webinar. And I really do appreciate your feedback. So if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to write them in the chat. And then I also have um, one more of these classes coming up. So it's going to be a fun one. I'm having fun um, working on my charcuterie board options. So it's the appetizers and mocktails. That would be next week then. And then I also have some other things on Eventbrite coming up. So if you, if I could get you guys to come to any of the other ones, I would love it. Um, and I love to help you guys where I can. 
just um, improve your health. So that's my goal. And does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, we'll get you all back to your day. Thank you, Sarah. She says the cookie cutters might be helpful. <laughs> Something simple. All right. Well, I'll um, stay on for a second just in case everybody, anybody has any questions, but um really appreciate you coming thank you happy holidays hopefully see you next week